the state of Kerala. Let me introduce to all of you Dr. Ratan Kelker, Mission Director, National Health Mission Government of Kerala, has joined us. Thank you so much, Dr. Ratan Kelker, for joining us. Thank you. So, uh, thanks for joining us in this busy, busy schedule uh, in the inaugural of APEC Health Tech Innovation Conclave presented by Health Technologies and Microsoft. The full partner is Ognito, and associate partners are Doxiva and Vivio. And the theme of inaugural session is how technology is playing vital role in improving the public health landscape, especially beyond pandemic, the way forward. And we all know kind of innovation being done in the state of uh, Kerala. So over to you, Dr. Ratan Kilkar, for your special address in the inaugural of three-day APEC Health Innovation Conference. Thank you, Sovik. Um, in my talk, I would like to basically dwell upon uh, a few areas. One would be how relevant has been technology in the field of public health? Second would be in times of COVID, how is technology being utilized for management of COVID and also for preventing COVID infection? I think that would be my second point. And now beyond COVID, what happens and how best the public health can embrace technology and what are the basic requirements of technology when we look forward towards uh, very effective healthcare delivery in terms of uh, uh, reaching out to the the last mile, as was pointed out by Professor in his talk a little earlier. I think there's some technical bits. So I think uh, let Dr. Ratan Kilker uh, come back. Uh, in the meantime, let us move to uh, Dr. DK. I think Dr. Kilker is joined. I think, yeah, I got disconnected. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, you're audible now. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so now talking about technology, you know, the technology has its own issues <laughs> while connecting to the uh, talk as well. Uh, so uh, I was uh, just mentioning that technology is not uh, new in uh, public health. We've uh, used uh, the data quite uh, efficiently uh, earlier on as well. And uh, we've been interpreting various interpretation, interpreting uh, the data which is coming uh, into the public health system very efficiently as well. Uh, you know, looking at the way in which uh, we have uh, handled various uh, national programs, uh, the line uh, uh, programs of various uh, uh, departments as well, we can uh, very efficiently uh, say that the data has always flowed into the system. Technology has always been uh, used in uh, uh, delivery of uh, public health. But uh, uh, looking at the way in which technology has evolved, uh, probably the health system has not embraced the technology to the desired extent uh, due to which uh, probably we are lagging a little behind in uh, embracing technology. The typical example I will give you is uh, implementation of various uh, softwares which uh, has been part and parcel of delivery of public health. The one basic software which we are all aware of is uh, the Unmol software which uh, ANM uses, the RCH portal, uh, somebody spoke about uh, the TB Nikshai. The HIV AIDS has a, a different portal. Now integrating various uh, uh, surveillance mechanisms, we now have a portal called IHIP. So integrated uh, health information uh, systems. So all of these things exist, uh, but how much have uh, all the uh, stakeholders in uh, public health really embraced it and used it sufficiently is uh, still a big question because um, the way in which uh, COVID taught us a lot of uh, lessons in embracing technology and ensuring that we use technology for efficiently identifying uh, the next spread or the areas where this is likely to be sp uh, spreading. Uh, so that was all possible because of uh, uh, technology and then not because of a manual intervention. So I would at this point of time say that the technology has evolved and probably the health systems have not embraced a uh, technology to the desired extent due to which we've not been able to make intelligent interventions at the right time. So let me talk about COVID, how technology has uh, probably brought in uh, a sea change in the way in which we are uh, managing COVID. So we all know the basics of uh, any public health management is uh, twofold, uh, or probably threefold. First would be the preventive aspect of it. Second would be the curative aspect. Third would be the rehabilitative aspect. So let me now dwell upon two things, the preventive and the curative aspect of it vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis COVID. So when you're looking at the preventive aspects for COVID, uh, I can tell you an example of uh, Kerala, wherein we have uh, a very robust mechanism of contact tracing, 
which we could do that based on uh, identifying the positive case identifying all the primary and the secondary contacts plotting that on a uh, on a gis map creating heat signatures so we would be able to uh, presume which are the other areas where these uh, uh, in this infection is going to spread and we could uh, intervene and isolate uh, create uh, containment zones micro containment zones all based on analysis of data which was flowing into the system and now how many of us have really used it efficiently across the country in terms of uh, the analyzing this data and uh, predict uh, and doing a predictive analysis of uh, where the infection is going to spread how do we tackle it uh, you know i think uh, not many ha have really done that a second one would be also when we look at uh, reverse quarantine you can use technology very efficiently for passing the messages. IEC is a very important activity, which is uh, the part and parcel of COVID management. That is making people aware of uh, you know the base, uh, basic guidelines of COVID management, the, uh, the strategies which the state is taking. So unless you have technology to reach out to people, uh, then you know, it becomes very difficult to pass on the information. Uh, you know, in the right information. Otherwise, what happens? A lot of uh, fake news and things like that keep uh, passing by. So technology is very, very important, even in COVID uh, times, uh, especially during the preventive aspect of it. Now, let me talk about uh, a bit on the curative aspect of COVID management. Now, uh, we know that uh, we need to have the social distancing. We need to wear mask, uh, sanitizer, and all that. Uh, you know, uh, for COVID management. And as part and parcel of the uh, the technology, which was already there. Uh, you know, say a teleconsultation, uh, this e Sanjeevini. e Sanjeevini, where the government of India's uh, uh, portal, uh, the application has been there for years together, but nobody had um, really used it effectively. But now there was a requirement to use it. And e Sanjeevini, I think, has been very nicely used uh, to prevent people from um, coming in uh, physical contact with another person and also getting their uh, good services at the and the comfort of their homes. So these are, uh, you know, which, which shows that when there is a necessity, uh, you know, we look at embracing technology. Whereas it should be the other way around. You should be using technology more efficiently so that your delivery of health services is as crisp and as precise as possible without waiting for an opportunity to hit us bad. And second one, I think it must have already been spoken earlier on, is about how we are managing ICU patients. Now we know because of COVID, the ICU and uh, ventilators are all getting filled. We don't have that kind of a manpower to have uh, this uh, specialist around the clock in this ICU, specialist nurses around the clock uh, in this ICU. So you need this remote ICU concept, teleradiology concepts, you know, all this is always been there, but we've never been able to use it efficiently. We've all been waiting for probably an opportunity to use it. So now a lot of the states have started using this mechanisms. So what I'm trying to tell you here is these systems are always in existence because we know how technology evolves, how mobile has evolved, for example, from the first time we saw a mobile phone, what is the current status of uh, the mobile technology. Similarly, in health sector with so many entrepreneurs, so many startups, so many uh, people doing R&D, coming out with various uh, solutions. So solutions are already there. So we need to probably walk one step ahead and ensure that we use that uh, solution for effective healthcare delivery system. I'll give you an example of two uh, or probably three good IT systems which uh, I have worked with in the health sector. One would be the uh, the National Health Authority that is Aishman Bharat's IT system, uh, wherein we uh, treat the patient, uh, we uh, compare the other database with that patient, the entire treatment happens there, the payments happen on the NHIT system, I think that is one of the most amazing uh, technologies which uh, the IT systems that I have worked with. Such uh, uh, a pleasure to work on such systems because it, it makes your life so easy and it throws up all the uh, data elements where you can keep a tab of various activities in the uh, hospitals. It throws out uh, fraud uh, uh, cases, it throws out various uh, uh, you know MIS reports. So it's such a pleasure to work with such kind of systems. Uh, but why is it happening is because we are all a part and parcel of doing it and ensuring that we are working on it uh, continuously without waiting for any uh, particular opportunity. So that is very proactively all the hospitals are using it and without 
uh, that IT system, uh, you can't uh, roll out Aishman Bharat scheme. So I think those are uh, very, very important uh, components that it should be made compulsory and everybody should start using it to get the benef benefit out of it. Second, uh, a portal which uh, I would say is very, very uh, good is uh, the second, uh, what we've been seeing now is the COVID portal, uh, be it the vaccination modules uh, from the even or the, uh, the, the way in which uh, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has come out with the rollout of this COVID portal, how the lab information system of um, ICMR is linked with this. I think that is uh, something uh, really uh, amazing to watch because earlier we were all thinking that the implementation of these IT systems may be difficult in the, in the public health scenario. But we're here we have these IT systems where we are uh, able to get a lot of benefit out of these IT systems. Uh, it helps in management of the patients. It helps in management of your ICUs, beds, ventilators. It throws out alerts uh, if their beds are getting uh, used up. I think these are some systems which are uh, amazingly uh, done. The third I would uh, say is IHIP system where the surveillance, the entire surveillance mechanism is built into the system. And then how best we are making use of it is ultimately up to the uh, users of the system. So uh, always technology, I would believe, is one step ahead. Uh, because uh, technology is always there. So we need to jump one step ahead uh, in delivery of public health services so that we can use up the technology and make our delivery more efficient. I think technology provides that opportunity. So we need to uh, look at that in uh, that particular sense. Now, uh, the question is about uh, beyond COVID. What happens beyond COVID? I mean, COVID is... Uh, uh, it's always there, you know, it'll, the virus will always remain in the community and uh, these issues will still remain. But uh, uh, what uh, has uh, transpired in the last uh, one and a half years, I would uh, believe, is the way in which people have started to look at technology in advent of uh, how COVID has uh, created that uh, distance between people. So physical distance has come in, but I think uh, more than physical distance, how you uh, connect to another person uh, remotely and uh, you know mentally, socially is more important. Not a physical, uh, even if you have a physical disconnect, it is still fine. But how you connect with other person mentally and socially using the IT systems has, uh, I think COVID has taught us that. Uh, so uh, there is already a concept called One Health concept, wherein it's a, a collaborative, uh, multi-sectoral uh, intervention where people, animal and the animals and the environment they all work in unison. Uh, towards this concept so that uh, we learn from uh, each other and ensure that we have a very effective intervention of uh, public health. So this uh, is a very, very important concept going forward as far as uh, health is concerned. So this uh, One Health concept, uh, which has come out uh, through WHO, I think uh, we all need to work together uh, towards ensuring that this One Health concept uh, flourishes and we uh, seamlessly integrate various IT system, various technologies already in existence, various platforms already in existence, so that we don't work on multiple platforms. Uh, we work on a single, uh, uh, very integrated, uh, eff efficient platform which cuts across various uh, sectors. And uh, you know, it, it's uh, in, in a very uh, good uh, convergent way that we can manage public health. So when you look at health, health can't stand in a, a silo uh, apart from people. So health, people, the various departments, be it social welfare department, be it the police, the revenue, the Anganwadi, ICDS, uh, women and child department, everybody, uh, you know, all the departments need to have that kind of an integrated approach. Otherwise, we will be ending up doing another good uh, intervention in the health sector. Whereas the people who are there in other departments will be completely be left out of utilizing this. So we should not create multiple systems. We should have an integrated system is what I am looking at uh, in, in the future. Uh, we all know after other uh, has come. So there is one element which can basically connect to everybody. That is the other number. So using that other uh, number, which is so unique for a person, we should be able to devise a mechanism of connecting uh, that person to the system. So what is happening now is the system is uh, in a different uh, uh, zone. Uh, people are in a different zone. The uh, IT system and the people are finding it very difficult to interact. But using Aadhaar, I would like to believe that um, it can be one uh, single source 
through which multiple services of all uh, departments uh, when we're looking at the government sector or even from the private sector everything can be given to a person uh, very seamlessly without much of a hassle if you use Aadhaar. And there is a concept already uh, which was started, uh, I think, uh, uh, four or five years back called a resident data hub. So this resident data hub is like a single source wherein all the information pertaining to a particular individual right from the uh, preconceived uh, time. That would mean uh, his or her mother or parents before they uh, conceive this person their details are captured, this person's details are captured. So as and when that person goes through a life cycle of change, right from um, being born, going to the school, getting vaccinated all during the process, you know, becoming an adult, going for a job, whatever are the requirements of a job, if you need a certificate, uh, whatever it is, I mean, this can all be using technology preempted. So because everybody knows what is your schedule of immunization as per the national schedule. So if your system is so vibrant that the day it is born, your parents get a message that uh, your uh, child is so and so and this is other number. OK, then you ask the, he or she goes through a life cycle, whatever all the certificates that the government needs, whatever all the things that you need, it can all be put in your uh, digital locker. You can um, all the uh, prompts can come onto your parents mobile if you want to get inoculated. Once you reach um, adulthood, you know, all your marriage certificate, whatever is your essentiality certificates, everything can come and uh, drop into your uh, thing only by doing minimum activity. And ultimately, when you're accessing health services, be it preventive, curative, uh, rehabilitative services, everything can be linked to one uh, particular uh, data hub. So that is what should be our uh, strategy moving forward. I think this thought has already been there. It's just that we have not worked towards it. This has remained in uh, um, the papers and not in action. I think if we go towards this uh, approach, I think we'll definitely will uh, do wonders, not only for the health sector, this will be applicable to every sector. Uh, so ultimately, it's how you manage data. Uh, it's not that how much you create and uh, you keep interpreting because uh, the data that you created now today might have been created by some other department sometime back. So instead of repeatedly creating data, we should use one data set and connect all the services around that data rather than every service asking for a data. So data is already existing there that has to be fetched by that particular service organization and service given rather than creating a hassle for people. Now that technology, uh, you know, uh, like I spoke, if we can move in this direction, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, you know, do wonders the way in which uh, we have uh, even looked at technology. But ultimately, you know, what's happening with technology is uh, technology uh, doesn't really get to each and every person. Like the professor was mentioning, does it really reach the remotest of person in the remotest of village in India? Uh, you know, the kind of technology you're looking at. If yes, then that's nothing like it. Otherwise, what it will lead to is a great, uh, you know, already existing digital divide. This will create another divide where one set will be onto the another, uh, you know, another planet, another person would be in the planet somewhere down below. So we need to ensure this digital divide is reduced. Accessibility of this technology to people, I think that is the most important challenge. Even now, you may say that hundreds of thousands of uh, smartphones are there in the hands of people, but um, how many of these people are really using that? Uh, how many of the people are really comfortable using it? I think those are the things which we need to uh, address. Then uh, somebody also spoke about the security and the privacy aspect of it. I think uh, um, that is a very, very important component uh, because now the data is available everywhere. And, you know, it is, uh, uh, we know uh, the various, uh, the, the problems where the data security and privacy will, uh, you know, uh, cost all of us. Now, another important component of technology is the costing. How uh, cost effective is that technology to the people? Because ultimately, when you're looking at public health, this is not for some uh, person who has got money to go to a, uh, you know some private hospital and ensure he or she gets a treatment and you get a mobile message and you're being happy with it. But because here you're talking about thousands of uh, uh, people, lakhs of people. So how effective and how cost efficient are these technology to that particular person? Uh, I think uh, uh, this is a very... Uh, serious uh, uh, thought process has to go into this. All our friends from the IT sector are also here, from the medical technology fraternity are also here in this meeting. So you need to also look at how cost effective are these technologies and how 
robust and uh, sustainable are these um, uh, technologies and looking at the way in which we are uh, going forward we should have an integrated approach so what is happening with technology is a lot of these uh, technologies come on different platforms maybe some technologies are not talking to the other technologies are we ready to have open systems or are we looking at having a, uh, a strict uh, straight jacket uh, brick and mortar kind of a system where you can't shake anything uh, like we used to have in the earlier days are we open for having this open api kind of an integration wherein anybody can uh, access technology are the is the industry ready uh, for that kind of uh, an approach i think these are some of the questions we need to answer and i hope that uh, during this a deliberation in this uh, uh, conference um, uh, such uh, answers would uh, come out and uh, would be beneficial to the uh, government also in the long run so ultimately technology uh, is always there how we embrace it and how uh, both the government the private sector the community as a whole uh, looks at technology for uh, delivering of uh, uh, not only public health but delivering of all a citizen services that are required for any person to live on this planet how effectively can this be utilized and uh, how uh, easy and accessible we can make it for the people to uh, use it is very very important so i think both uh, capacity building is needed at various levels and uh, like somebody was mentioning we can't develop a technology uh, from a top down approach based on the need of what is happening in the remotest of areas we need to understand that it should be a bottom up approach everybody should be able to embrace technology and only then will uh, uh, even public health uh, be more uh, efficiently and delivered to a citizen using technology but otherwise uh, i think technology is here to stay in all sectors including public health and uh, how best to we make use of it uh, and how faster uh, we can make use of it is uh, resting with all of us and um, you know hopefully uh, the deliberations uh, here will uh, throw out uh, such kind of uh, timelines and time frames and methodologies of working together so that we can make uh, all of this possible so with that i would uh, stop here i thank uh, apac for uh, providing an opportunity uh, for talking to all of you and it's always been a pleasure uh, with apac because uh, the people in apac are personally known to me and uh, i'm extremely glad that uh, you're coming out with such kind of uh, uh, innovative uh, themes uh, which uh, also gives us an introspection uh, time uh, you know because uh, before coming here i would also like to think what is it that uh, you know uh, the governments are doing what is it that uh, we are doing and it also gives us a, a mirror uh, to go back and say that okay there was something which probably i have missed out uh, you know I, and i can go back and work on it so i think that gives uh, Uh, you know uh, you are all giving that opportunity to me to introspect as well in the process so with that i will stop here uh, thank you uh, for having me and uh, uh, wishing uh, wishing this uh, deliberation the the best and any outcome uh, with which um, uh, we can work uh, i'll be more than happy to uh, work on that thank you thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr ratan kelkur mission director national health mission government of kerala uh, yes sir uh the outcome will be documented of this the deliberations uh, being made today and will be made tomorrow and day after we'll create a comprehensive event report where we'll take recommendations and we'll be circulating back to you and to all the stakeholders across india with government with academia with hospital ecosystem also with industry so that some points can be taken from that event report uh, from the same itself and a future road map can be uh, made accordingly and you have rightly said that uh, if i may just summarize what you have said that you talked about uh, the uh, in key aspects uh, technology as a preventive aspect uh, pre covid po- during the covid and post covid how it will all look and if i take if i say the last part where you talked about that cost effective and sustainable technology the time has come to think about that and also an integrated approach is, need, is needed to uh, talk about uh, delivering healthcare model you, you as as you rightly said that uh, the national health authorities uh, uh, it system yeah it's true it's, it's, it's quite a remarkable it system they're using and also uh, the two with the vaccination drive is being made by the government of india and state governments again it is playing a huge role in that as well uh, so with that uh, thank you so much to dr ratan kelkar for joining us and uh, it's always a pleasure hosting you